All right, good morning everybody. Welcome to another round of coffee and questions. Today's topic is a little bit different than usual. We're going to talk about eyelid surgery or blepharoplasty. And so there's a lot of questions I got asked because people are kind of different. I mean, in a lot of ways they want to do these surgeries, but they don't want people to know about it or they've done it and they don't want people to know about it or they don't want people to know they're looking into it or anything like that. Now, a unique thing happened on my right because of uh, tissue and adipose tissue under the skin buildup. I was getting like this weight or whatever. I had adjusted to it, not paying a lot of attention. Somebody said, hey, you know, you look kind of tired and that, you know, your right eye looks like it's kind of weak. And I go, yeah, uh, I know. Now I work in the medical field, so lots of friends, stuff like that. So I talked to an ophthalmologist. He goes, no, your problem is not with your eyes. The problem is with your eyelids and it's genetic. And a lot of times people think, oh, that's from, you know, people that are alcoholics of which I don't really drink at all, hardly, rarely ever. And it's from all these other things. Well, sometimes it is just genetics. In my case, okay, let's just say it was genetics and we'll get to all the questions and answers in a minute. And somebody said, well, you know, well, what would you do about it? Um, well, my next step, because I work in the field, is you want to find a cosmetic surgeon. Um, not just any cosmetic surgeon, because there's billboards all over the place saying, hey, look at me, come here, you know. And, you know, they're looking for the business. I get it. Okay, so the next step in this was to find who was the best or one of the best in terms of eyelid surgery, blepharoplasty, you know, like that. So that took me a little bit of time, but I narrowed it down. There were two doctors within my area that were like, let's say one of the top doctors that does eyes, in, you know, in Southern California, I live in Southern California. And so I picked one because I happened to know his wife who I've worked with in the past. And I went ahead and I went there and, uh, you know, gave me a discount, um, you know, because I worked in the hospital and stuff like that with them. Anyway, so I decided to go ahead. A little bit nervy because, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty, lots of questions. But he had staff where, you know, you could call anytime, ask all the questions you wanted. Okay. So part of the step is, you know, you sign the paperwork. You got to go get lab work done. You know, you get a urine, you know, you get a CBC, a chem panel, they're simple lab work and they want all that stuff pre-surgery. And so that was fine. And so I said, okay, so I got all that done. I had a date, everything was lined up that morning. I can remember, yeah, you know, you're a little bit nervous about all this because, uh, there's really not much turning back. I mean, once you start this, right? So I get there, I go in, the staff was more than kind. They brought me back. We talked for a little bit. Anesthesiologist came out, talked to me. Okay. And then they went ahead and they sedated me, let's say. Okay. And they did the surgery. Now I had uppers and lowers both done. And so when I came around, I mean, yeah, my eyes were swollen. Uh, it was kind of like a little bit of a throbbing pain, but it wasn't bad. And they give you your discharge instructions, you know, like, uh, you know, don't rub your eyes, stay out of the sunlight. You know, you got to sleep at a little bit of a, a tilted angle. You can use cold compresses. I mean, stuff like that. These were some of the basic general things, but they had gone over all of this with me. And no, you're not going to go out shopping to Home Depot. You're not going to go out in the garage and work or anything like that. You're just going to take it easy for, you know, three, four, five days. You know, whatever it is that your particular physician tells you. And that was the path, you know, that I went on. Now he did tell me after the surgery or just before the surgery, actually, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to take a lot of skin off. I'm not going to take a lot off. You could end up in a mistake that a lot of surgeons can make easily. You know, you could end up looking almost oriental because of taking too much off. And I was like, okay. And he goes, so you may have to do this in two steps. Um, you know, this one, you know, you're going to get the general anesthesia. We're going to do the uppers, lowers, anything after that. We can just do local kind of anesthesia, just local here. We won't, you know, you're not going to get knocked out or anything and you stay awake. You just stay quiet. And then we do the second part of that, which is going back in, tightening it up a little bit, attaching it to the bone. I forgot the name of that particular procedure, but that was the, anyway, the second part of this. And I was like, okay, that's fine. 
And so, you know, I went home, went through the healing uh, process. It looked like you'd been in a prize fight with two, you know, raccoon looking black and blue kind of eyes and swelling and all that. And, you know, you do the ice packs. And somebody said, well, what about pain? And I go, well, the first day, it's like a tightness and like stinging that's mild and it was kind of intermittent. It wasn't that bad. He sent me home with Vicodin, double strength, 10 milligram instead of the five milligram. And I didn't really need it. Um, I used Tylenol. Uh, it wasn't that bad for me. Okay, now other people might have a different experience, but for me, it wasn't that bad. So, um, but I had the pain medicine if I needed it. Now, the other interesting thing about the person I went to that I thought was uh, over and you know well above and beyond is he gave me his personal cell phone number to him and his head nurse, let's say, both of them. You have any questions or any problems, any concern at all, or if something doesn't quite feel like it's going right, you call. You will be directly put through to me or her. And I'm like, wow, okay. And it's a lot better than fighting a phone tree in some surgery center, right? So these were nice things along the way. And so my first follow-up appointment was about uh, four, four days out, four or five days out, I had to come back in and see him. And these are all wrapped in the same cost. They're not costing you anymore. So and I came back in, hey, you're healing well. I mean, everything's going okay. Uh, he gave me these uh, eye drops, the uh, liquid tears kind of a thing. And they help keep down some of the inflammation um, in and around the eyelids. And I'm like, okay. And so I went home, I did that. About another week or so later, I went back in to see him. These follow-up appointments are like that, they're fast. I mean, he just comes in, he wants to make sure everything's going okay with you. They do take photographs along the way. So that was it for you know that first step. Now, about eight months after that, which is fast forwarding up to uh, just recently, uh, just this last Friday, today is Sunday. So, on this last Friday, I went in for the second step because he had decided, hey, look, you still got some of this sagging. Uh, you can leave it alone and not do anything, or I can go back in and I can finish, you know, tightening this up. Like I said, I did not want to do it all at once. It was, it's better to do it in two steps and he was being cautious. It's like, okay, that's fine. So I went ahead and I did it. Now, I'm going to show you, I'm going to take the glasses off. And you'll see here, I've still got swelling because I'm only a couple of days post-operatively. Okay, so after that, you know, I go back in, uh, the process is faster. Lab work's already been done. I mean, all this stuff, I, had, I did have to redo the lab work again. So I went back in, boom. I mean, they took me back like right away. And now the second part of this, was fast compared to the first part because they're not doing anything as extensive. So my son had gone down to get coffee at Starbucks or whatever. I think I was in there for start to finish. I looked at my watch. I was in there for about an hour, you know, give or take, maybe longer, but I mean the actual in the operation room that he had was roughly about an hour. And uh, what I really liked about the one is he took his time. He's got his own little team. Everything went very smoothly and the same thing. Cell phone number, call if you got any problems. Otherwise, I wanna see you in a week just to make sure everything's healing and it's going okay and going to plan. Okay, so that's kind of where I'm at now. And so hopefully, you know, this is the last, you know, step in this. And uh, so, questions and answers on this. The first question is, do you feel better afterwards? Yeah, once you, uh, you know, was there any pain after the second one? Again, they gave me some Vicodin. This time around when I came home, uh, because on the left side over here where uh, the tissue removal was a little bit more necessary or, you know, than over on the right, I guess they did more over here. There was a little bit more pain. I thought, well, maybe I don't need the full 10 milligram Vicodin. I took five of it. That was fine. I just busted the pill in half. It took half. And then that was it. I didn't take any more of the Vicodin because the Tylenol is fine and I've been using it about once a day. Today, of course, uh, Sunday, I'm not taking it at all. I just don't have the pain. There's, there's a little bit of pressure, a little bit of irritation where you're tempted to want to rub your eye. Don't do that, okay? 
and use a Q-tip and kind of, you know, brush at it and get, you know, the little itching or whatever's bugging you to go away. Try not to touch anything right now. And they use dissolvable sutures. Somebody else said you got to go back in for suture removal. No, they're dissolvable sutures, okay? So, no, you don't. All your follow-ups are to make sure the healing process is going okay, you don't have any infection and everything looks fine and is on track with, you know, what he wants you to be. So, um, that was that for, you know, that question. Uh, next question is how long is the healing process? Well, that just depends on the extensiveness of the surgery you went through. Now, the blepharoplasty, when they did uppers and lowers, it took some time. And then after a while, um, you know, I felt like my eyes were able to be open a little bit more than they were in the past because of the weight that I had, like I was explaining. Um, so I don't have any negative side effects. I mean, I suppose that there are some. Again, I would, my, my, my first best advice to you is fine. Don't worry about the cost. If you're going to do this, don't be a penny pincher about this. You don't want to go, I mean, to somebody that doesn't have a lot of experience in what they're doing, try to find the best that there is in terms of eyelid surgery. Now, a lot of cosmetic surgeons do a whole multitude of things, you know, breast implants, you know, Botox, I don't know, cellulite removal, whatever. And so I found somebody that really specialized heavily in eyelid surgery. And he actually does surgery at more than one hospital. He teaches at USC Medical Center. And I checked into his background. That's what you should do too, because you're putting a very high level of trust in this individual once they start to make the cuts. And uh, so was it smooth? Yeah, it was very smooth. I mean, when I came in, they came in with um, a surgical marker, which is sterilized and make the marks, or he makes the marks of what he's going to do, remove or his, you know, pathway of whatever he's going to do. And then the anesthesiologist talks to you, the nurse is there, and all this stuff goes very smoothly. Uh, the other question was, would I do this again? Uh, yeah, I would. Um, now, there were two reasons for this. Part of it is vanity, of course. I mean, it's going to make you look better, and I knew that. And I thought, yeah, that's cool. I mean, yeah, I like that idea. I mean, you know, I get rid of the, um, you know, the eye irritation over here, the weight at the same time. I'm sure it's making you look better. So I suppose there's vanity involved, but my first initial push to this was because of that weight over here. And it's like they said, well, you can't just do one side. And on this one side, we have to do both upper and lower, and that will fix your problem. But in that, we also got to do the other side or you'll look kind of lopsided. So I mean, it's like, okay, you know, makes sense, right? And so I had a little bit of an advantage because, like I said, I work in the medical field and I knew all these people and I talked to a whole bunch of people about it before I made that step. But yes, to answer your question, I would do it again. Pain control again, um, like I told you, on the blepharoplasty, I probably had a little bit more stinging irritation and stuff. I mean, because after they make the cuts and they go in, they do some cauterizing as well as suturing and they do do some skin removal and then they suture it all up. So your first day, it's not... It's not like intolerable. I mean, I came home, sat there, you know, with a cold washcloth. Now somebody goes, well, they give you these ice pack things. What I found worked better for me rather than a bag of frozen peas and all this stuff is I made a tray and I put ice cubes in it with water and I took a small dish towel, folded it up, soaked it, wrung it out, stretched it over my face like this and laid back for a while. Then I would take it off. I'd watch TV because you're going to be bored sitting around. And yeah, there was minor, minor irritation um, where the incision sites were. I'm sure that's where I was feeling it at, but they give you pain medication, you know, if you need it. But really, I didn't really feel the need, me personally. Now, other people I know, I'm sure, probably go ahead, take the Vicodin. If you're a, a good-sized person like me, you probably are going to want to ask them for the double strength, the 10 milligram. It will suit you better. If you're kind of small, petite, you know, female or person or whatever, you probably get away with the five milligram. That's up to your doctor and you, I mean, to have that discussion. But the pain is not bad. If they would have sent me home with nothing, I, I could have got easily gotten by with Tylenol, to be honest. But, you know, I was glad to have had the Vicodin in case I needed it. Saves you from making a phone call back, you know, complaining about the pain and having to go pick up another prescription, right? 
They also give you, after surgery, or mine did on both occasions, they give you an antibiotic. Um, the specific isn't important, but they will always give that to you prophylactically. And so they'll give you seven days worth or whatever it is, and you take them twice a day for the seven days. That helps to prevent, you know, any possible infection. And he's also keeping an eye on you. So these are all kind of like safety factors, nothing that's a big deal. Somebody said, well, the antibiotic's expensive. No, it was $10 for the whole prescription. And that's if your insurance doesn't cover it. In my case, this kind of a surgery is something you have to pay for. Your insurance is not going to cover it unless you can prove that there was a medical necessity. And I didn't want to go through the big battle because just because of the weight, they didn't determine that was enough of a medical necessity to cover it. So the answer for me was no, because I did check into it. That's fine. I paid for it out of pocket. Okay. So these are things that you can look into, you know, maybe you can convince your insurance company otherwise, but a lot of times when it comes to cosmetic surgery, that's not going to happen. Uh, the other question was, well, did I just walk out and drive home? Of course not. I mean, no, you have to have a driver or Uber or whatever. You're not going to drive home after either one of these. Remember, mine was a two-step process. The blepharoplasty, definitely not. Um, so, so, well, I could have driven home after, you know, like that second kind of a one. Yeah, maybe. Okay. But it's a safety precaution. No, you don't because, you know, they put eye drops in your eyes and afterwards your eyes are swollen and it stings and it's irritating why would you want to okay so i'm not going to go down that path it would be foolish no you have a driver what do i think of the follow-up well i explained that earlier the follow-up's great they actually called me later that day i was one of the earlier morning cases and so they have plenty of staff so the staff called me later on in the day hey how you feeling everything going okay is your pain controlled i mean do you have anything that you want to talk about any issues they were very polite, very nice people. I mean, really, like I said, way over the top. I loved it, okay? So, no, you don't have any worries in that regard if you pick the right person to start off with. So, I didn't just randomly pick a surgery center that was pumping people out like in and out Burger. I mean, like I said, I did my due diligence, my research, and I found who were the best. I narrowed my list to four and then to two. So, um, this again is a personal preference. I mean, you have to decide what you want to do, but don't chase cost. You want somebody that really knows what they're doing. Like I said, you have one set of eyes, one face for life. So take care of them and don't be skimping. Okay. That's my best advice for you on the onset. Does your vision get better afterwards? Well, in one way, yes, because I don't have that weight there anymore that was pulling it down. So I feel like, you know, you, you go from like this to like this and it opens up better, but it's not going to do anything for your vision. I mean, if you need cataract surgery, that's, you know, go to an ophthalmologist and figure that out and go down that path. Mine was different because of this weight. So I got the weight off. So yes, in one way, my vision is better, but don't think that it's doing anything to your actual eyes themselves. It's not, it's relieving the weight, the pressure and whatever, and opening up your eyes a little bit more and you'll adjust to that. I mean, as you go through the healing process, and it's nice because when you, you're like, wow, I can actually open my eyes a little bit wider, it seems, and uh, my vision seems to be a little bit better, but it wasn't dependent on the eyes themselves. That's my point. Did they take pictures when I first went in? Well, yes. I mean, uh, when I went in for the evaluation and after I had given them the money and we were setting things up, one of the things was he reviews all of your lab work, make sure everything's okay, and then they take photographs. I mean, they took a lot of photographs, like, like from the front, from the sides, from different angles, close-ups, far away. They did a whole bunch of photos. I mean, that's for his own records. Now, they did that both times on both surgeries with me, and I'm sure some of it's for liability reasons and so forth. But, you know, it's also their way of tracking. But yeah, they took photographs, and they took photographs on the blepharoplasty. They took photographs again even afterwards. And there was one time which I thought was uniquely great. He wasn't in the office. He got called away on an emergency when I went in for a follow-up. So what they did is they have high-end camera equipment. They came in and they took like four pictures. And then they immediately sent them off to him. He received them by phone wherever he was lecturing or whatever he was doing. 
he was able to review the photos, see that everything was going okay because it was just a follow-up visit, and then go ahead and say, okay, fine, you know, set it up for another week and a half or whatever it was for the next follow-up. So all of this, I mean, is very, you know, very well planned is what I'm saying. So I had a great experience. I know other people on YouTube and, uh, you know, other people maybe don't have the same experiences, but again, it comes back to did you do your due diligence and did you pick the right person to begin with probably rather than one of these places that are like a factory. So, all right, well, I'm going to conclude the video here in a minute. I didn't have a whole ton to say on this, but I did want to get out there and let people know. Don't worry about what other people think. If it's something that is going to make you feel better, you think, go ahead and do it. If it's something that's going to help you, like in terms of this weight problem or vision, then you should go ahead and do it. And But pick the right person, okay? And don't worry about justifying things to people. I mean, like I said, one face, one set of eyes, go for it, do it. I don't have any regrets. Yes, I would do it again. And I'm glad of the doctors that I picked, okay? So that's my best advice to you. Um, if you've got a different experience, you can leave it in the comment below. If you want me to do more discussion on this, uh, on this procedure, I mean, I can. Just drop me the questions and we can always put together, you know, I mean, another video. But I hope you're having a great weekend. I hope this explained all of the questions. I got a lot of questions asked by friends off of Facebook and email. Hey, did this happen? Did that happen? Did things go okay? How you doing? You know, all this stuff. So, yeah, everything's going great. And like I said, I would do it again. I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you click subscribe. We do tool reviews. I do all kinds of different things. And because I work in the medical field, I bring you yeah, my advice on some things too. All right, folks, I will see you in the next video. Click subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.